Hello and welcome to the Easter Sunday edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where we're going to be taking a look at a puzzle called Thermal Equilibrium by Flinty, which has been recommended by many people we trust as being an absolutely brilliant puzzle. I have to say, when I opened this puzzle, I was somewhat astonished um, that this could have a unique solution. <laughs> Um, there's no extra rules either, other than what you might expect. We've got we can't repeat digits on the diagonals, and these are normal thermometers. Oh, there is one extra rule actually. I think all the thermometers have to add up to the same number. So that's a uh, Maverick's just taken off to fly past. How bizarre! Um, but but anyway, yeah, it, it's a really arresting looking puzzle, and as I say, it's meant to be brilliant. Um, and I hope. I hope this will just continue a brilliant day that must have started for you all with Easter egg, Easter egg hunting. And hopefully we've all had a lot of chocolate <laughs> chocolate today. I know I have anyway. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll read the rules of this one in a moment or two's time. Big news though, it is, it is not only Easter Sunday. Tomorrow is the 1st of April and that means it is Patreon reward day. And we have a James Bond theme Sudoku hunt uh, coming up for you. Uh, it's being constructed by some unusual characters, Ernst, Auric, Francisco, um, yeah, a number of other constructors who, uh, who certainly seem to know a thing or two about crime. And we hope that you're going to enjoy that Sudoku hunt very much. So that will come out at 4 p.m. UK time. UK, yeah, UK time tomorrow. Um, look out for it then. That is that is not an April Fool. Um, any other news? Yes, I've got some birthdays to do. So let me turn my attention to those. I'll start off with Danny. It's your birthday, and I know this not just because of your email, which I will come on to, but also because your boyfriend Alex wrote in and said that you'd appreciate a shout out. So Danny, many happy returns. And and I, I knew it was Danny's birthday anyway, because Danny had written in to let us know it was her kitten Goose's first birthday. So you share a birthday with your kitten. And I think I've got a picture actually. Let me check. Yes. There we go. This is Goose. Apparently Goose likes to watch Cracking the Cryptic. So a cat of rare, uh, of rare taste. Um, and um, anyway, I hope Danny and Goose, you have a brilliant birthday today with, of course, chocolate cake. Um, and next, I think I, I think I read out Jonas's birthday a few days ago, but it is Marlin's birthday. I think 25 you've turned today, Marlin. I hope I... I Jonas said that I would never be able to pronounce your name right, so uh, and gave no guidance, no guidance. So I'm guessing, but I'm going to go for Marlin. And I know the two of you met in 2022 doing computer science, uh, and that sort of has hastened an obsession with Sudoku. Um, and Jonas tells me, Marlin, that you are a very gifted solver, and he clearly thinks you are an incredibly intelligent person as well. Um, and he also said, to quote Hosier, that she has me floating like a feather on the sea, which is a rather nice, a rather nice thing to hear, and I hope um, improves your birthday. Now, I do know also that Jonas is going to be attempting a chocolate cake for you today, um, although I think it's against his better judgment because his favourite cake is strawberry. Well, let's let's gloss over that. That's clearly wrong, uh, but never mind. It's it's a thought that counts, and Jonas is going to be making you chocolate cake today, Marlin. I hope you have a brilliant birthday, many happy returns, and I hope the cake is worth the wait. And with all that said and done, let us have a look at what Flinty has done here with thermal equilibrium. Uh, these are the rules. We have got normal Sudoku rule supplies. So we've got to put the digits one to nine once each in every row, in every column, and in every three by three box. Uh, digits may not repeat along an indicated diagonal. So these cells here have to be the digits one to nine once each. You can't repeat a digit. And the same is obviously going to be true on the other diagonal there, sometimes called the positive diagonal, because it would have a positive gradient. If we were to plot Y against X, and uh, we would find this has a positive gradient. So that's why it's sometimes called the positive diagonal. Now, uh, Along a thermometer, digits must increase from the bulb end. So let's look at this one. It's the most sort of thermometer. It's a vertical thermometer. So imagine this square was a four. This square will now have to be higher than four. It doesn't have to be five. So we can skip digits out. But we do have to make sure that just as mercury rises, as the temperature would rise, so our digits must rise along a Sudoku thermometer as we move away from the bulb end. 
and the total value of all digits on each thermometer is the same and must be deduced by the solver. So, um, well, let's guess. I mean, 15. If, 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 every, if, if this thermometer contained digits that added up to 15, then every thermometer would have would have to contain digits that sum to 15. And that's all the rules. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. I mean, the, the first thing that I think it feels to me like we must have to use here is, is well, it's a fact that derives actually from the secret. And the secret is something I only share with my very favorite people. If you're still watching this video, of course you're one of my favorite people. Um, so I will share the secret with you. And the secret is that any complete column of a Sudoku, indeed any complete row, any complete box, because it will contain the digits 1 to 9 words each, must sum to 45. Now, that's interesting then, because we can then say, uh, if I... We can then sort of approximately evaluate the value of all the green cells, can't we? Because we know this row sums to 45, we know this row sums to 45, we know that column sums to 45, and we know that column sums to 45. Maverick doing another fly past. Um, now, 4 lots of 45 is 180, but that isn't the sum of the green cells, because of course what we did there was we, we included these corner cells twice. So, if we're going to say that these add up to 45 and these add up to 45, that's true. But obviously this cell is in both those collections of digits. So actually the perimeter of a Sudoku will sum to 180 minus these four corner cells. Now, actually this is going to get a bit more complicated, isn't it? Because how many thermometers have we got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 nine I think actually I'm going to double check that I, I did do that carefully but I'm going to check that because if I get this wrong I could come up with all sorts of nonsense four five six seven eight nine okay so I've got nine twice so we've got nine thermometers so whatever right so green the total value of green which is 180 minus the four corner cells plus that digit, which is also on a thermometer, must be exactly divisible by 9. Um, hmm. So, right, let me just get this clear in my head. So 100, 180 is itself divisible by 9. Yeah, then no, that doesn't doesn't mean that the, the corners have to be divisible by nine in sum, does it? It does no, it definitely doesn't mean that. Right, sorry. So we've got um so we've got 180 minus the orange squares plus blue, all divided by nine is going to be the value of every single thermometer. Alright, let's try the the, the fact that Right, I mean, there's a trick here, which is a very minor trick, but just to mention it to you, let's let's put a three in the corner. We won't sing for it because we don't deserve to, but let's put a three in the corner. A question to, to ask now would be, is it possible for any other orange cell to be a three? And the answer is no, because of the diagonal constraint. So it, ordinarily in Sudoku, obviously these two couldn't be a three, but this one could be, because it's not seen through the... the, the the plain old mechanism that is Sudoku, but in a diagonal Sudoku, the two diagonals do see one another, so you couldn't repeat a three on the opposite corner. So that means that the three, sorry, the four corners of this grid are all different numbers, and therefore the minimum these four corners could add up to would be 10 if they were one, two, three, and four. So if they were 10, then we'd have 180 minus 10, 170, plus this digit has to give a number that's divisible by 9. Now, I don't know my 9 times table up to those levels, but I do, right, I do know 
that any number that's divisible by 9, the sum of its digits is divisible by 9. So that suggests to me that 171, yeah, 171 must be divisible by 9 because 180 is divisible by 9. So, yeah, okay, uh, uh, yeah, okay, so 171. Right, so 171 is a potential value, but, well, it is, but you couldn't make the orange squares. The orange squares are not 1, 2, 3, and 4 because that would require this to be a 1. And it can't be a 1 because it's the fourth cell along its thermometer. Hang on, does that mean... Yeah, okay, so that's quite interesting. And perhaps, okay, it's, it's actually obvious now I think about it, but I had to think about it, so I, I will say it. So 180 is not a possible value of all these thermometers. And that's because the corners must add up to at least 10. And this square can't be a 10 to offset that difference. So, so we're deducting a number that's, that's definitely bigger than... The orange squares must add up to more than this number. Therefore, we're looking for a, something that is divisible by 9 that is less than 180. Could be 171, could be 162, could be 153, etc. Okay, so let's max out this now. Let's max out the difference. Uh, how low will that go? Well, we could do 9, 8, Mm, what, mm, no, we can't do that. We could do 8, 7, 6, 5, I think. Because what I've noticed there is I can't put 9 in any of the corners. If you put a 9 on a, on a thermometer at all, you can only put it in the, in the tip of a thermometer. Because if you put 9 there, obviously this square now has to be greater than 9 and there is no, no such Sudoku digit. So 8, 7, 6, 5 would be 26. Deduct 26 from 180 and we get 154. Right. And that that might work. And then we have to increase 154 by the number in the blue square to get a number that is divisible by 9. So we need 162. Well, that's very interesting, because now we we know for certain that the value of each thermometer is either 162 divided by 9, or it's 171 divided by 9. So it's either 19 or 18. 171 must be 19, because 180 is 20, isn't it? So, um, so it's either 19... So every thermometer is either 19 or 18 in the puzzle, which feels like progress. Um, now, how are we going to narrow that down further? So to get... So how did I get... How did I get to... A, so to get to 162, I had to have quite large numbers in the corners. quite large numbers in the corners to get to get my 180 down by enough such that yeah because this can't be it needs to be at least four well hmm, it does need to be at least four because it's the fourth cell along a thermometer but it's not a four i can tell you that because if that's a four this thermometer is, is full of 1, 2, 3, 4, and it would add up to 10. And we've just worked out that thermometers in this puzzle either add up to 19 or 18. Um, so in fact, can 5, 4, 3, 2 won't be enough, will it? That's No, that's that's 14. Right, so this digit is at least 6. 6, six 5, 4, 3 is 8, uh, is it 18? 18. Oh, so that works. Right. So that digit is, is 6, 7, 8, or 9. Definitely. But if it's 6, because, because each thermometer adds up to 18 or 19, the only way this could add up to enough is if it's 6, 5, 4, 3. 
and then the total would be 18 that we're going for which means that all right hang on let's just check that maths works then so then then the green cells plus the blue cell would have to add up to 162 which means 156 is what the green cells would have to add up to which means they have to, the corners have to add up to 24 oh and that's fine that's easy yeah okay because we said that what, what do we say the maximum was for for the orange squares sorry i think we said eight seven eight seven six five which is 26 not 24. so yeah that's quite interesting though actually because right here is another deduction eight can't go in eight can't go in a corner of this puzzle I, my first reaction was of course i can put an eight there but i can't put an eight in either of these two squares because the thermometers will add up to too much because you have you'll have to put a nine in the tip if you've put eight in the penultimate cell now i've got 17 with two more digits to come i've got 17 with two more digits to come and th therefore the thermometer will add up to at least 20 which is too many so actually i've over oh, i've over or underestimated the potential value here so let's just check seven now seven seven probably will work because 19 was a possible total so if we go seven and then put eight in 15 and make that a one two pair 18 that's fine 18 is fine okay so we can put seven we can't put eight into a corner and if if we put seven as a maximum digit in a corner seven six five four is 22 so 22 minus 180 is 158 plus at least six is 164 right that's huge so now i know the total because it's impossible right <laughs> because you can't put eight in a corner you can't the maths doesn't work if you if we want to get all the thermometers in this puzzle to add up to 162 you just can't do it because although you could put seven six five four in the corners and therefore the perimeter of this puzzle would add up to 158 and, 150, and and we've still got this digit to add in in order for 162 to be the total we'd have to write four in there we've already looked at that cannot work four three two one doesn't add up to enough on this thermometer we know this is at least a six so we now know there is no way to keep all of the thermometers down low enough for 162 so we must be looking at 171 and therefore each thermometer has a value of 19. i love this this is absolutely brilliant um now if it's got a value of 19 Oh, uh, now i was going to try and use the secret on row one but i don't know what that value is oh yeah because this takes quite a lot of the pressure off the corners actually because the corners no longer have to be as big in the sense that this is six seven eight or nine ah hang on six didn't six six five four three wasn't that 18 yeah six five four three was 18 so this is now at least seven so right okay so this value is at least seven but the value we're honing in on is 171. So if this was 7, 164 would be the value of the perimeter, which would mean the corners add to 16. If this is 8, 163 is the value, the corners add to 17. If it's 9, the corners add to 18. Right, so the corners of the puzzle add to 16, 17 or 18. Yeah that's very average isn't it uh, 
That is very average. Okay. Um, so, what we might need to do... We could use the secret on column one. I could get the value of those squares. Um, and the, I mean, that's obviously because this column adds to 45, but we've just worked out that each thermometer adds to 19. So those squares add up to 38. So these add up to seven. Um, Right, and I was going to say, okay, so this can't be greater than 6, but that's not true. Uh, it can't be 6. <laughs> it can't be 6, because if this is 6, these two squares are at least a 7 and an 8, and 6, 7 and 8 already add up to 21. So that's definitely not 6. Can it even be 5? Oh, it can. Uh, no. <laughs> this, is cool. this is unbelievable. You can't put 5 in the corner here. Because if you do, the minimum value of these squares is 6, 7. 5, 6, 7 is 18. But this square, remember these add up to 7. That has to be a 2 if that's a 5. And now we've got 20, which is not 19. So, so that square is now a maximum of 4. But these have to add up to 7. And this has to be lower. So this is, oh, this is brilliant. That is one of my favourite first digits in a long time. That is a 3. But because obviously that we have to ascend this has to be this digit has to be bigger than this one yet these two have to add up to seven so that's three four uh, which is so that's seven so these two squares add up yeah these two squares add up to 12 by the mathematics of this thermometer uh, but they can't use a three nine or a four eight pair so they've got to be ah no <laughs> they've got to be five seven and they've got to be in that order because of the thermometer so one one in this row is in one of those squares. My phone is um, um, buzzing. Um, oh no! Yeah, okay. Where's nine in this row? It's got to go there. It's got to go on the tip of a thermo, and there's only one tip available. Well, okay. So I must be able to repeat that trick with eight. I could, in theory, have put an 8 here, except that's a corner. We've already thought about why that doesn't work. It's because this would be a 9. We'd have 17 here, plus at least a 1-2 pair, and this thermo would add up to at least 20. So I can't put 8 there. Obviously, I can't put 8 earlier on in the thermo, so that's an 8. This thermo adds up to 19, so that's a 2. These squares, now we can just fill them in. One of them is a 1, one of them is a 3, one of them is a 6. These squares add up to 10, so that's a 9. Oh, this is absolutely ridiculous now i can get that digit by sort of a law of leftovers principle can't i we can because we've got 15 at the bottom plus another two thermometers worth uh, which are 38 so now we're at 53 um but the difference between these 10 cells and this column, which must sum to 45, is therefore that digit, which must be an 8. So that means... <laughs> that means we can now ask where 9 goes in row 1. And the answer is not there, because that would be a 10. So the answer is there. So these two squares add up to 10 in order that this thermometer adds up to 19 and these two these can't be 1 9 or 2 8 so this is 7 3 in this order or 4 6 in that order that that's forced where is no that's a bad question um hmm. okay all right maybe maybe this is as far as we can take this Uh, I don't know. Hang on. Let me think. Let me think. What else can we do here? Yeah, I tell you one thing I could do. I could ask where one goes in column one, because I don't think I can put one in this bulb, because these two squares would have to add up to 18 and both be nines, and that won't work, will it? So there is a one in the corner. 
So now, well now two in row one must be placed here, I think. I'm just going to check that. I feel like that's right. Yeah, I can't put two there. There aren't two numbers lower than two. So I think that's a two. Still don't know what that digit is, annoyingly. Um, nah, I'm not sure. Okay, where? Okay, where's two in column one now? Can't be here, can it? So it must be on the base of this thermo, which now must go eight nine in order to add up to enough. This I love this. This is one of the cleverest puzzles I have seen in a. I mean, we say this almost every day, but these puzzles are—they are brilliant. Now, what does that mean? Can we? Can we get the one? In, well, one in column nine is in one of two places. Oh, I can establish a difference between these two squares now. That's going to be a sensible idea. Yeah, because remember, 171 is today's secret, isn't it? Now, 171, well, at the moment we've got 11 in, in the... So we've got 180 minus 11, which is 169. And we've still got to deduct this digit. So say, what's the least this could be? Maybe it could be a 3. Uh, I don't know if it can be a 3. I'm just going to put right. No, it can't be a 3. This wouldn't add up to enough. Uh, and it can't be a 4. Okay, so maybe it could be a 5. So let's go with 5 here. But if this was 5, then we'd be at 164, having to get back up to 171. So, th right, oh, I see. So these two numbers are two apart, with this being two greater than this. So... This is seven, eight or nine. So this is five, six or seven. It's not six, look. So that's not eight. Oh, bobbins, okay. Nearly, I was really close to being quite useful, wasn't it? Could we do, th there has to be a 3 or a 4 here, but not both. So I think this square has to be a 3 or a 4, forming a pair with this one. And then the next digit here is going to be 5, six. Oh, I thought that was going to be seen here, but it doesn't. So this is 5, 6 or 7 then. So these add up to at least 5. So these add up to a maximum of 14. If that was 7... This would be 9, 16, 18, that's too many, so that's not 7. I mean, if this is 9, 14, 3, 2 does work, bobbins. Um, Alright, so we're going to have to come up with some other rinky-dink here. We know these are two apart, don't we? Ooh! Ooh, there's a seven looking at this. Sudoku. Sudoku is my friend for once. Seven goes in. Right, that's going to do everything. Six, four. We know those have to add up to ten. That's five. That's three. Now, does this add up? It does. That does add up to 19. Beautiful. Now, what have we got here? We've got 15. We need these to add up to four. They've got to be one and three. So these squares should be two, four, five, eight. Now, does that add up to 19? Yes. Uh, we've done the perimeter. That is absolutely ridiculous, Flinty. That is that is just beautiful. So now, well now, oh, eight. I thought I was going to be able to put eight in the middle box, but no, we probably need to use the diagonals, I would think. What about two and three are both off the diagonal? So two and three have to be in those squares along the negative diagonal. And that's not two. Um, and that, in fact, that's not two either, so we get two. Um, and we can put a pencil mark two there, a pencil mark two there. Let's try nine, actually. 
9 is also off the diagonal, so this is now 9. That's got to be 3. Does that work? Yeah, that does work, because 3s are off the diagonal, on the positive diagonal, so 3 in the centre makes sense. What about... Um, trying to find another digit that I can I can do something with not actually no I'm not having much joy with that let's try what about those squares then they are four seven and eight okay I can't see how to do that I can see that's not seven no okay that didn't work All right, let's try the negative diagonal in total then where we've got still got to place a five on it somewhere where's that going and the answer is i don't know it's in one of those two squares so these squares are from four five seven and eight and I, all i can actually do look is take an eight out of this square so that's really underwhelming um right Oh dear. I mean, it's it's very possible that this is um, this could still be quite a challenging puzzle from here. Four is in one of those squares by Sudoku. Because, I mean, there's so little that we, we know about the middle seven by seven. Um, three is in one of those squares. I think we're just going to have to go pencil marking a go-go and see where that takes us. 1 is in one of these squares. Is that useful? Or maybe... Ah, okay, now let's try the other diagonal. Where's 2 on this diagonal? So I've just seen, look, it can't be in those two squares by the machinery that is Sudoku, and it can't be in these two squares. So 2... I, I mean, it doesn't get placed, I don't think. Unless I'm missing a trick. I can't see how it gets placed, but it is in one of two places on the diagonal. So there might be a trick we can do. Yes, where's 9 on the positive diagonal? This 9 and this 9 are helpful. So there's a 9 in one of these squares, and that 9 is beautiful. So that's 9, that's 2, that's 5. That's 2 by Sudoku. I've not put 6 in this box, so let's plonk that in. Now, has that, has that done anything magical for me? It's put a 6 in one of these squares. It's, no, uh, it's put a, f oh, 5. Where's 5 on the negative diagonal now? It can't go there anymore. So this is a 5. Uh, on the on the negative diagonal, we've got a four, seven, eight triple. The eight of which is in box one, so that square is not an eight anymore. I'm going to uh, I'm actually going to pencil mark. I think the positive diagonal. I need one, five, six, eight. Yeah, okay. One, five, six, eight. These two definitely can't be eight. That one can't be six. Why this one? That one can't be five. That one can't be five again. That one can't be five. So that's okay. We're going to be able to put the five on this diagonal. Uh, it's got to go there. Now it does, yeah, that gets me a five here. Uh, that gets me a five here. I feel like we've done all the fives. Maybe that's wrong, but it seems to be correct. Right, that's is that exciting or not? It's quite exciting. Uh, what now? Nine, how many nines have I got? Lots, but not all of them. No, okay, I am left, look, with a naughty little X wing on nine. Oh, whoopsie. Naughty little X wing on nines, but. What that does mean is that this is a 169 triple. So these squares should be a 3-7 pair. And if they're a 3-7 pair, we can write them in. Which means that's a 7 by Sudoku. 
That's a three by Sudoku. No, I was about to put a, a rogue seven in. That's not true. We've not put eight into this um, this thing. Now we've got a one six pair on this diagonal. So that becomes an eight. That becomes a four. That becomes a seven. That becomes an eight. That becomes a seven. That might be good. Maybe. Well, those digits we should know now. One, four and seven. So definitely don't include two. A snooker maximum, aren't they? It's amazing how often one, four, seven, which is sort of a modular set, they all have the same remainder when divisible divided by three. They cut they come up as a triple. Right, these squares are three and eight. And somehow that's not resolved, of course. <laughs> um that's not seven. Um one, four, and six, I want to say, into this column. That could be any of those digits, I think. This one can be any of those digits again. Right, so where do we think? Maybe row four? One, four, six. Oh, there are only three gaps, so that is right. So that's one or six. That's one or six. That can't be four. So in fact, four has been placeable in the middle box for ages. Hang on, is that right? Really true? Yeah, that one way we could have seen that differently, look, is that four has been placed in box four for a while. So that could that was four, that was nine. That means that's a nine. This is a one six pair. Let's tidy up our pencil markings. This is a one six pair. We might as well put that in while we see it. And if that's a one six pair, that digit ought to be a two and that means this is a one six pair we've got one six pairs everywhere um that four means this is a one and that means this square is a six and that means that's a six that's a, and is this going to go it might go now it might go come on come on be kind to simon um six and eight yes we can do that Six and eight. Eight and three. Three needs to find a home in that box. Four, that's a seven. That's a four. That's a seven. That's a four. I'm delighted about this. That actually wasn't too difficult at the end. If it's right, let's see. Yes. Wow. That is absolutely brilliant. Thermal Equilibrium by Flinty. That's so original. I'd, I'd love to know how long you had to spend playing around with the shapes of the thermometers to because it, it was very important at least i can't remember exactly when but we worked out that this square had to be at least a six so the exact position of this was very relevant in terms of its thermometer you know where it sat on its own thermometer and and in order that the the options would get reduced and I, I, this down here having to be a 3-4 pair was beautiful, giving us a 5-7 pair. The way that the perimeter unfolded once you knew what the sum was, ah, that is a, a worldie again. It's an all-time great puzzle. If we ever make another book flinty, somebody needs to remind me that this needs to go in it. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. Happy Easter to you all, and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.